using Python optional arguments when defining functions. Defining your own functions is an essential skill for writing clean and effective code. In this course, you'll explore the techniques you have available for defining Python functions that take optional arguments. When you master Python optional arguments, you'll be able to define functions that are more powerful and more flexible. In this course, you'll learn what the difference is between parameters and arguments, how to define functions with optional arguments and default parameter values, how to define functions using args and kwargs, and how to deal with error messages about optional arguments. To get the most out of this course, you'll need some familiarity with defining functions with required arguments. So if that's something you feel you need to work on, check out this real Python tutorial. Now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Creating functions in Python for reusing code. You can think of a function as a mini program that runs within another program or within another function. The main program calls the mini program and sends information that the mini program will need as it runs. When the function completes all of its actions, it may send some data back to the main program that's called it. The primary purpose of a function is to allow you to reuse the code within it whenever you need it, using different inputs if required. When you use functions, you're extending your Python vocabulary. This lets you express the solution to your problem in a clearer and more succinct way. In Python, by convention, you should name a function using lowercase letters with words separated by an underscore, such as do underscore something, as seen on screen. These conventions are described in PEP8, which is Python's style guide, which you can check out in depth in this real Python tutorial. You'll need to add parentheses after the function name when you call it. Since functions represent actions, it's best practice to start your function names with a verb to make your code more readable. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to define functions with no input parameters. Defining functions with no input parameters. In this course, you'll use the example of a basic program that creates and maintains a shopping list and prints it out when you're ready to go to the supermarket. Start by creating a shopping list. You're using a dictionary to store the item name as the key and the quantity you need to buy of each item as the value. You can define a function to display the shopping list. When you run this script, you'll get a printout of the shopping list as seen on screen. The function you've defined has no input parameters as the parentheses in the function signature are empty. The signature is the first line in the function definition. You don't need any input parameters in this example since the dictionary shopping list is a global variable. This means it can be accessed from everywhere in the program, including from within the function definition. This is called the global scope. You can read more about scope in this real Python tutorial. Using global variables in this way is not a good practice. It can lead to several functions making changes to the same data structure, which can lead to bugs that are hard to find. You'll see how to improve on this later on in this course when you'll pass the dictionary to the function as an argument. In the next section, you'll define a function that requires an input argument. Defining functions with required input arguments. Instead of writing the shopping list directly in the code, you can now initialize an empty dictionary and write a function that allows you to add items to the shopping list.
The function iterates through the dictionary's keys, and if the key exists, the quantity is increased. If the item is not one of the keys, the key is created and a value of 1 is assigned to it. You can run this script to show the printed dictionary. You've included two parameters in the function signature, the item name and the quantity. The parameter names are used in the code within the function definition. When you call the function, you pass arguments within the parentheses, one for each parameter. An argument is a value that you pass to the function. The distinction between parameters and arguments can often be overlooked. It's a subtle but important difference. You may sometimes find parameters referred to as formal parameters and arguments as actual parameters. The arguments you input when calling add item are required arguments. If you try to call the function without the arguments, you'll get an error. The traceback will give a type error stating that the arguments are required. You'll look at more error messages relating to using the wrong number of arguments or using them in the wrong order later on in this course. But in the next section, you'll see how to create more flexible functions by adding optional arguments. Using Python optional arguments with default values. In this section, you'll learn how to define a function that takes an optional argument. Functions with optional arguments offer more flexibility in how you can use them. You can call the function with or without the argument, and if there is no argument in the function call, then a default value is used. So let's get started by looking at how to assign default values to input parameters. Default values assigned to input parameters. You can modify the function add item so that the parameter quantity has a default value. In the function signature, you've added the default value 1 to the parameter quantity. But this doesn't mean that the value of quantity will always be 1. If you pass an argument corresponding to quantity when you call the function, then that argument will be used as the value for the parameter. However, if you don't pass any argument, then the default value will be used. 1 in this case. Parameters with default values can't be followed by regular parameters. You'll see more about the order in which you can define parameters later on in this course. The function addItem now has one required parameter and one optional parameter. In the code example just seen, you call addItem twice. Your first function call has a single argument, which corresponds to the required parameter item name. In this case, quantity defaults to 1. Your second function call has two arguments, so the default value isn't used in this case. You can see the output on screen. You can also pass required and optional arguments into a function as keyword arguments. Keyword arguments can also be referred to as named arguments. You can now revisit the first function you defined in this course and refactor it so that it also accepts a default argument. Now when you use show list, you can call it with no input arguments or pass a boolean value as a flag argument. If you don't pass any arguments when calling the function, 
Then the shopping list is displayed by showing each item's name and quantity. The function will display the same output if you pass true as an argument when calling it. However, if you use show list false, only the item names are displayed. You should avoid using flags in cases where the value of the flag alters the function's behaviour significantly. A function should only be responsible for one thing. If you want a flag to push the function into an alternative path, you may consider writing a separate function instead. In the next section of the course, you'll look at common values which are used as defaults.